there, YouTube? I'm back again today for another gameplay video, another solo gameplay video. And today I'm very excited to be playing Truck Off the Food Truck Frenzy game, uh, the roll and write version of the game from Adam the Apple Games. This is for 0 to 99 players, very interesting player count. Uh, take you about 25 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 plus. I would ignore 14 plus, I would go with probably about 8, 9 plus. This could definitely very easily be a family game if your family got into the game. So in Truck Off, you're going to be moving a food truck around this little map right here, and you're going to be stopping hopefully at each turn at a different location on the map which are the different shapes those different shapes correspond to the different dice and that's how many points you're going to get so for instance uh if you stopped at a black one right now you would get 16 points <clears throat> However, if you wanted to stop at the black one, you have to skip all these other ones and go all the way over to here. And if you can complete three uh, of a row, so, you know, maybe you do yellow, then you do blue, then you do black, then you automatically unlock the bonus, which is at the end of each row. And the bonuses are all over here, which is really nice. But let's just get into it. I'll show you a solo game. You'll learn exactly how to play. It's a very simple game. I'm using side B. You can also use side A. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference between the two, but hey. I'm sure there is, there's some nuance there that I'm missing, and that's a pretty crummy roll, but luckily, the person who's the main roller, and this will switch every turn, but in a solo game, you're always the main roller, gets to re-roll one of the dice based on what they really want to kind of hit and where they are on the map. So, 16 is great, but I don't know if it's really something I want to do. I want to start off slow, so I'm going to try and re-roll this purple, and I did, I got a 3, that's fine, so we will start, you can start here, here, or here. I will start right here, and you can move up to four spaces. And ideally, you want to end on one of the spots because that's how you're going to score points. So I go one, I go two. I put a little circle there to reference that I've stopped there. And now I'm going to score that number of points, which is three. And I put it in the first triangle right there. So boom, very, very simple. Uh, next turn would go to the next person, but since obviously it is a, uh, a solo game, it's just me. But let's play out how it would work in, in someone else's game. So if this were a two-player game, and I was playing with someone else, they would get to re-roll one of these dice, and I would still move forward and use one of these. But So that's the only difference. When, when it's someone else's turn, the only difference is you do not get to choose which one of the one dice is re-rolled. But other than that, it's uh, the exact same as a solo, with a couple things here and there. Mostly when it comes to venue promotions and how that doesn't work at all in a solo game. But let's keep going. Let's see what I got. This roll looks pretty terrible. Pretty stinking terrible. I'm very close to the blue and the yellow. So maybe I can go yellow, blue. Yeah, that might be what I do. So I'm going to try and reroll this yellow. See if I can get a one. Great. So I got a one. So I will go one, two, three. This is, this is not doing well. One. Now... In the solo game, you ideally would want to hit every single one of these, I guess. However, in a regular version of the game with more people, uh, the first person to get to the finish and have it had at least 12 turns pass, um, that's when the game ends. So they don't automatically win the game. You still tally up the score. But, you know, if you're here and they're all the way down here and 12 turns have passed, game over. But let's see what we got going on here. I got the one. Roll it up again. Hoping to get a good blue number, and we got a five. Man, we are rolling really poorly right now. We also could just go to the green right here, or we could hit this green up. Mm, let's, yeah, maybe we go to the green. What's the green? It's six out of a D8. This is also bad. Let's go with, uh, yeah, we'll take the six out of the D8. I'll be content with that. So I put the six here, and now since I have completed three in a, a row, not a column, but a row. I automatically circle this for myself, just for me, and now I have gas. Now, other people can unlock that gas as well, uh, or they would have unlocked that gas right there potentially as well. It's not that just one person can have the gas, but now you can put a G somewhere on your map, and you have to do it immediately. And this is going to be a gas station, and when you get to that gas station, you'll automatically gain three more gas. Now, one thing I've learned is it's very useful to put them somewhere near wilds, because there's some wilds around the board, and those are uh, pretty special. There's not much going on over here, but I could build a bridge. It's already a bridge. You know what? I'll just put it uh, right there. Now you can see some of the interesting choices that comes into play in this game right now. Actually, I kind of want it right there. Yeah, I'll put it right here. No, I'll put it right here. Ah, uh, I don't know if that's a good choice. All right, whatever. Don't overthink it. So, going for blue. Ideally, we got a 10 on blue. That's great. So, oh, I forgot to mark my, my green. 
So if I get to a blue, that'd be great. But here's the thing. <clears throat> you can only put, you can only stop on a stop as long as you've never crossed through it. So let's say, for instance, I'd cross through this purple right here. You know, I was just like moving my, my bus and I crossed through the purple. I can't later come back and then put a circle on it. That's a no-no. So there is a definite element of uh, how you're going to be able to maneuver your way around the city, which gives this more strategy than you might see at first glance. So let's see what I got, though. Is there a good way to get to blue? I could. I go one, two, three, four. I can even hit up the gas station if I wanted to. It's completely unnecessary. But yeah, I put a gas station there. Let's hit it. One, two, three, bam. We got the blue. That's a 10. That's good. Get some points and roll it up again. Five. You stuck. 12. You don't suck. Yes. So uh, one, two, three, bam. 12 in the red. And let's see what we got. So now I got a wild up here and I got a black up here. Seven on my wild, seven on my big one. 16, beautiful. So we will treat this. One, two, ooh. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I should put the gas station closer. All right, we'll just say no to the wild. One, two, three, four. All right, so I get myself 16. I can still go back to the blue potentially, but probably won't be able to. And then we do it again. I'm in a weird kind of no man's land. I don't like this spot over here. I was tempted by the wild, which I didn't even end up getting. Ooh, now I need another I need another one though. But there's not anyone around. So I don't want to reroll this black one because there's no black one nearby. The thing nearby is a purple, which, oof, that hurts. Oh, the blue. The blue could buy me some time, you know. Yeah, we'll get the blue. The blue's on two. We'll reroll that. Now it's a four. That's two more. Hey, let's do math. All right, Bowers Math Corner gets the four. That does skip this and skip that, which is unfortunate. That was probably not a good choice. Oh, let's roll it up again. Got the two, got the 19, oh, the three, eight, the one, the six. And what do we need? We need a green. So we have put ourselves in a really bad position because one, two, three, four. Yep. So you are about to see what happens when you screw up like this. Um, so if you ever can't land on a spot, uh, or let's say you can't land on one of uh, the, the restaurant spots, then you just mark an X on the next open one. So for me, let's see, I still am going to move four, but where am I going to move? I put that gas in a stupid spot. One, two, three, four, and then that will get me to a yellow next time. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. And the reason I do that is because I want to be close to this yellow because we're going to mark off the green because that's the next one in the line. And then we got ourselves a yellow, and we'll be right next to a yellow. So all we have to do is focus on get a good number on yellow, hopefully. Roll it up. It's a one. <laughs> Reroll it. It's a four. And see, that would where that's where it's more interesting with more players, because other people might be like, oh, you know, um, what, what do you got going on over there? So, especially when we get to the two times venue, uh, which you'll see hopefully in a little bit. <clears throat> so I've got the four here. So I feel like we definitely go down to the four, lock it up, lock in the four. And we only have two of this row mark, so we haven't unlocked that yet. But if we can get to a purple, which is luckily right there, uh, we can do that. So we're going to get to this purple, too. This is going to work out nice. Now, that red being there is not very nice, but we could go around. So we're looking for a purple. We got a two on purple. Let's tempt fate on a one. Womp womp. So we got a one on there, but we did unlock this one, and this one is re-roll up to two dice for the rest of the game. So that's big. That is incredibly big in a solo game. Uh, regular game, not nearly as much, but in a solo game, humongous. So we're looking for another purple. Oh, we forgot to mark that we were in the purple. I hate, I keep forgetting to do that. All right, so we need purple, yellow, green, blue. What do we got? So one, two, we could get the blue. It's not great at all. It's actually really bad. No, because we could go blue, red, and then one, two, three, we we'll go blue, red. We we'll go blue, red. Blue, red's fine, right? And we got a 10 on blue. It's fate. One, two, three. And we got a 10. That's 10 points. Boom. 
And what do we got? We got to get to the red. So we get a, we need to get a high number of red. Give me a good number of round red. Seven. I think we can do better. Two. Wow. Oh wait, we can roll re-roll up to two dice. Yes. Now we can. Uh, and I imagine that could be the same die. Let me double check that in the rules. The venue follows normal venue rule. Oh, that's a two times gas station scoring game. And they didn't put money details on this one, it looks like. <laughs> but they were just like, uh, what do you think it means, man? Let's read the rules. All right. Reroll up to two dice for the rest of the game. I would say that I could reroll this same die again. Boom. It's a nine. If we cheated, I don't care. Because there's no way to know how good we did because they chose not to put that in the back of the rule booklet. Like, that's that's that tells me that this was like a throw-in, the solo variant of the game. Also, there's no way to play zero players either. I was really disappointed. I thought, like, maybe that was going to be a game where it would just play itself and you would get to see how a game would play out, which I would love to see. I used to do that on, like, uh, NFL 2K back when I had it for the original Xbox. So let's see, what do we what do we do? We got to the red one, two, and we got a nine now because of our cheats. That's okay. It's 19 points in that row. It's good. But now we do have ourselves an issue. Where are we going to go from here? So let's check. We can get one, two, three. We can get to purple, which is really bad. That is, in fact, the worst one we could get. So purple, let's not do purple. We could get to green, which is the third worst one we could get. Hmm. Or, or we could just bite the bullet and say, hey, we're going to... We're going to, we're going to, you know what? Maybe we do that. Maybe we just bite the bullet because in a solo game, you're going to have different rules, different restrictions here in, in a two, three, four, five, any other player count game. We would absolutely not want to eat the bullet in this particular situation, most likely, and take an X. But I think in a solo version of the game where there's no one we have to compete with in order to score the maximum amount of points, we absolutely can take one, if not two turns of of traveling and taking x's i think that is something we can do all right let's see we're on the red <clears throat> so we go one two three four miss our turn one two three four miss our turn so I'm, i didn't even need to roll because i was not going to stop for anything so we got an x here x here and now we are in a really weird spot because we can get what was it one two three four we can get to the wild and get make that a red so yeah let's do that so we got ourselves a wild and 11. I'll take that. That's good. One, two, three, four. So we got 11 on red. And I think doing that is going to make this game um, hmm, much more interesting, much more about how you navigate. But I don't know. I feel like you're going to get a definitely different play experiences depending on if you're playing the solo versus with other people. That is absolutely the case, I think, in this game. <clears throat> so let's see. We need to get to a blue. That is not going to happen, which means we now need to kind of plan to get to the green, which is feasible with our stupid gas station. One, two, three, four. And then, so we take the X, and then one, two, three, and we're on the green. And I need to roll for this. I am getting ahead of myself a little bit here. Uh, but we do take the X on the blue, because we knew we were going to have to just travel for the four spaces, and now we get a green, and we got an eight. So that's great. And that gives us two in here, so we can get to the yellow, which... Should be here thanks to our gas station because the gas station gives you an extra three, if you recall correctly, which means now I have one. I still have seven that I could move, but there's no point to it. You know what? Forget this. Forget this. I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm using all that gas. I'm just, I just joyrided. I just joyride in this game. Deal with it, game. All right, so we got five. Boom, which means we have unlocked the times two, which now lets us draw a times two on a venue and record two times the sales when I finally get to it. So we need to make sure it's going to be somewhere where we're absolutely going to hit up. And what are we going to hit up next? We're going to purple next. We don't want to maximize that one. I think I think this wild. Let's do the wild. The wild's going to get hit. I know, I know I'm going to do the wild. So let's roll it up and see what we get. We are going for the purple, and luckily we're close. We got the four. Excellent. 
one, two, three, bam, we get the four right up in here. Can we get to another purple? Is there another purple nearby? I do not see it. I used the gas station once. Stupid gas station. All right, whoa, so where are we going? We have purple to get to, we have yellow to get to. None of that's happening over here. Wait, actually, one, two, three, four, perfect. We can get, where is that gas station? Can I reach the gas station? One, two, three, no. Oh, it's right there. So one, two, three, four. Then I'd have one, two, three. No, it doesn't really matter. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, four. Can I get to anything that's going to help me? One, two, three. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Is this the play? The gas station? Maybe I should stop mocking it. Let's try it out. Because I, because the last time I used it was actually very useful. Not mocking the gas station ability, but where I placed my gas station. My ineptitude, so to speak. But maybe I'm about to redeem myself. So we go one, two, three, four. Fill up. We got three more moves. And we go one, two, three. Bada boom. Three points. Uh, do we want to reroll it? And I'll take the three. Now we need to get to a yellow, and I think with the gas station, we might be able to do it. Let's roll it up and see what happens. Two. Forget you two. Yeah, six, baby. I probably should have made sure I got to the gas station first, but I'm going to get there, I believe. All right, so we got one, two, three. So that puts us back up to six, or uh, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, so close. Is there any other way? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, nope. Bummer. Okay. So I shouldn't have re-rolled the yellow. Actually, I could get to another yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Bada bing. That's where we're going. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Gas station for the win. Now if we can get to a green, we'll unlock the special ability on this one, which is... Uh, what is it? It's the... Uh, what is that? Draw a bridge on the map. Oh, the bridge is cool. So you get to you get to essentially create your own bridge anywhere. It can be very useful. And, and like I said, there's a good deal of uh, tactical to this game that you might not have seen when you first were watching. You're like, all right, we're just rolling dice, picking dice. No, there's a little bit more to this game, which I do like. So, uh, green. What do we got? What do we got? How can we get to a green? Where is the nearest green? We got one here. We got one here. One there. That one's tempting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's a blue there. Wow. Did we just open that up? I think we did. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to take this green. We got a four on the green dice. So we, we, we roll it two times. It's a seven. Bingo. And we've now unlocked the bridge. So now that's the million dollar question. We have to place the bridge right now. Where is a bridge most going to help us? Like, whoa, this is an interesting one. So let's let's figure out what we're going to do next because we can min-max at this point. Obviously, in a multiplayer game, you would not want to min-max like this, and you'd have a lot less control, I feel, in a, in a uh, multiplayer game. Uh, so that's that's neither here nor there. So what to do? I feel like maybe here, or maybe there, or maybe somewhere near the gas. The gas would be nice. Yeah, if we could get from here to there with that extra step. Yeah, let's go here. Let's try this. So we built ourselves a bridge. Building a bridge, baby. All right, we're green. So now we're looking for blue. We got an eight on the blue. That's nice. So one, two, three, and we got the eight here. Looking for red, seven. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, one, two, three. Perfect. Uh, I will re-roll the seven. Roll it again. Got a ten. Boom. So we go one, two, three, ten here. And we're looking for the black. And we got a black right down there. One, two, three, four. Holy moly, this is great. One, two, three, four. Oh, we still need to roll the black, though. And honestly, you kind of only need to roll a couple of that. Well, no, you need to roll them. What am I talking about? And we got her down to our last row. So we're looking for another black that we could get to. That appears to be a problem, which is very unfortunate because I don't want to lose these points, but it looks like we're going to lose these points. One, two, three, four. How many points am I going to have to lose? I'm going to lose a black. Can I get to a red then? 
I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we can. So we're going to bite the bullet on this black. Uh, uh. One, two, three, four. Mark the X. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, uh, but I want to, uh, yeah, lose the purple. Seven. It's more important to get the red. We'll sacrifice the purple, right? All right, so roll this up two times. Nine. All right. Could be worse. And then we're trying to get to blue. Can we get to blue? Oh, blue's no problem at all. We have a blue over here. Oh, no, that one's taken. We can get it over there. So we'll roll these dice the right way, even though I know I'm only needed to roll the blue. Eight. I'll take the eight. So we go one, two, three, four, eight on blue. Can we get to a green? Bam, got the green. <laughs> got a three, re-roll that. Got a three, re-roll that. Got a two. Shoot you. Uh, we should also probably move to that spot. One, two. Man, did I just really get a two on the green? All right. Then we have yellow, red. <clears throat> oh, no. Yellow, purple. One, two, three, four. I can't get to the wild. Oh, I could really use a bridge. So, or oh, I could get to this yellow, and then there's a purple. So just forget you, wild. So, yeah, we go one, two, three, four. Boop, boop, boop. Get to the yellow. See what we get. Six. Bam. And then we got the purple. Purple. Roll it up. Got a one. Reroll it. Got a three. Take. I'll take that. And because we unlocked that, we also got five bucks. Do you believe that's five bucks? Let me make sure. Yeah, it's just five bucks. And it's at the end. You wouldn't want a special ability on your last turn anyway, because you probably weren't going to use it. So now we can total up our points. So the scoring of the points is pretty easy. You're going to add up all the numbers in each row and write that over here. And then you're going to add all your $5 bonuses claimed. So we got one of the $5 bonuses. And then you would also get points for something called promotions. And uh, a promotion is a multiplier you get. So when you get, let's see, to promote, which you can do right here on the third row, which we didn't actually accomplish, you can add to uh, the top of here either, I believe it's two circles. And then when someone else promotes, you get like one circle as well. And so what that does is that multiplies. So let's just say that we had gotten three of these ones up here. You would take the three times the one, two, three, four, five that I got in this row. So it'd be 15 points, which would be pretty cool. Um, but tallying up the score, I'm not going to tally up the score. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother because like I said, it doesn't actually have anything in the rules that tells me how, what's good, what's bad, what's middle of the road. That's very unfortunate because, you know, and I'll probably do another video on this. I'll probably do it with my, my game night when, when all this stuff ends. Or maybe I'll do it with my wife. But one of the things that I'm noticing about this game that really intrigues me is what it could potentially lead to. Like, the the core mechanism with the dice and the re-rolling and the simplicity of it, I really do like. I like that an awful lot. It's very easy to learn, very easy to teach, very simple. That's great. But where the real meat and potatoes could potentially come in this game is from this and from these special abilities and maybe diverging paths and bigger maps. Like, that's what I really get excited about with this game because I'll be honest with you, from side A to side B, I, 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 whatever. Not really, I really, I really wasn't, I didn't feel different at all, which is unfortunate. Um, and I would like it if they did feel different. I would like it if there was another notepad in the future. And that's, that's one thing, like, why, why don't you just leave a notepad for expansion, like a print off? I know uh, some role rights have done that before, where the game would bump up the complexity based on the different special abilities, or maybe you got to pick different special abilities. But I, I also would like to see this game get longer, where your special abilities, you kind of, you know, maybe sync up certain different special abilities, and that would add a whole extra layer to the game, where it's like... You know, I'm really not the most concerned about scoring points this row. Uh, I'm really more concerned about absolutely being sure I get this bonus because this bonus is going to sync really well with my game plan that I'm trying to orchestrate. But you need to turn this into like, say, a 60 to 90 minute game. But I think that would be really cool. But I think it could be as simple as just taking the mechanisms and adding more of this and maybe 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 an extra page of the rule book clip but you know i'm talking i'm talking out my rear right here that was truck off roll and right hopefully you got a really good feel for how to play the game there uh, i do enjoy it 
Uh, I'm critical of it on certain aspects, especially just not having the scoring, the points, uh, or what points are scored are good. Uh, but I do really like the uh, the core mechanisms, and I think there's a lot of potential here. Uh, very interesting little roll and write with way more, way more going on than you expected at first glance. So that is Truck Off, Roll and Write from Adam's Apple Games. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to check that one out. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or consider supporting the Patreon down below. And in the comments below, let me know what is your favorite, uh, what, what, is a, what is a solo game that you think really lends itself well to doing gameplays of, that, that, that can really provide interest? Because I did enjoy this and I enjoy working through the puzzle and trying to figure out the maximum way to score points, but I'm really looking for something with more of a story, something you really bite your teeth into and really enjoy the ride. One, one I have in mind is Folklore of the Affliction from Greenbrier Games, but my friend Lucy actually borrowed it and now she can't find it because, you know, you know how that is when you got a lot of games. And uh, I want to play it because I know I'm probably going to get, you know, stuck inside the house for long periods of time. And uh, But let me know in the comments below. What do you think would be a great solo game that lends itself well to gameplays? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.